Friedrich Church is another one of these Hudson River School painters, and his interest will go beyond America. And in fact, he will travel extensively, in this case, to Mexico, showing off the landscapes of the world. And this is really popular, especially around the American Civil War, because people are not traveling. And so you would have these massive traveling exhibitions with these massive canvases. And what people would do is come in and they would pay a fee to get in. That goes to the war effort. And then they could get that sense of travel that they couldn't get, of course, because it's wartime. So let's look at one of his pieces. Actually, we're going to move back to the American West, dealing again with those ideas of American transcendentalism, which, by the way, you see transcendentalism here as well, the massive elements of nature. But we're going to look at Twilight in the Wilderness. This is a much smaller piece. And it really stands out that way. I mean, we're used to wall-sized landscapes with some of these pieces from Bierstadt and Cole and some of the others. So what's going on here? Well, what you're seeing is a majestic view of a sunset over the landscape. And it's an incredible sunset. Look at the detail in the clouds. Look at the use of color and light. He's captured just that moment where the red from the clouds is reflected across the landscape, almost creating a sensation of the landscape being on fire. Now, what we see or what we don't see is any of the turbulence or discord, considering it was painted about the time of the end of the Civil War. Now, by creating such a perfect and sublime landscape, Church contributed to the national mythology of righteousness and divine provenance increasingly difficult in the face of domestic conflict. You see, that's kind of the issue. When you have war, such as the American Civil War, the bigger and the bloodier it is, the more art will return to nostalgia. People want to be comforted. They don't want to be pushed in new directions. And that's where church comes in. The colors in the clouds almost come off as fireworks, as if it's the unification or the reunification of the country. And this brings us to the idea of why landscape is so popular at the time. It's spirituality without structure. It's a return to nature, something that we're going to see as a common theme right up through Teddy Roosevelt and beyond. It's placing man within the immensity of nature, reminding man that he is temporary, that creation will outlive him. It's not only a memento mori, but it's a reminder that creation is so much bigger, so much more impressive than us. And in this case, we're not really looking at manifest destiny. We're more on the transcendental side. He's not showing us a specific landscape that is supposed to make us think that we should move out there and use the resources. After all, it's twilight in the wilderness. This could be any wilderness. It could be out west. It could be in the Appalachians. It could be somewhere else. So here it takes on a very spiritual form, and context becomes important. Because we know it's happening around the Civil War, that strengthens the argument for the spiritual rather than manifest destiny or any of those other ideas.